different. All of our fields are different. Some fields are better than others, but typically year in, year out, you kind of get a feel for each field on its individual basis. The first thing I see when I look into a cornfield is maturity. That's the first thing I, I notice, you know, and, and you can tell so much by just gazing into a field. This field, you're starting to see it's, it's near its end. If you look at, and you can see these ears and these shucks, they're, they're turning yellow. That's a good sign that the moisture's leaving them, the shucks are dying. Still has a good green, healthy plant, so your stock quality's good. You know, I, I see that. Obviously, we look at the ears. This corn looks like a, a, a really nice crop of white corn. Earlier in the year, we look at the deep, dark green color, make sure it's got enough nitrogen. During the hot months of July, we look at, is the plant stressing? Is it too hot? Can we get more water to it? You know, there's always different stages you look at different things. So at this stage, I'm looking at yield, at the end result, you know, what, what's going to be the gross return of this field versus my inputs, obviously, at the end of the day, is what, what's the net return for me. The biggest thing that we overcame this year, or that we had to overcome, was, was July. I think the last time we did our interview, I made the comment that, that it had been a pretty ideal season. June was kind of cool and had some rain, and we had some really nice conditions. And then July came along, and the, the biggest problem we had was when corn was pollinating, it was 103 degrees out here every day, and, and uh, it was extremely hot, and those conditions are not conducive to uh, raising a good corn crop. And that, that, was our, that was our toughest obstacle this year. The corn that we're harvesting right now, a lot of it would be, you know, 108 to 110 day corn, but some of this corn that, that maybe didn't get as much water or suffered more through the July, hot July months, that corn's gonna get ready earlier than maybe corn that, that has had ample water on it. But we'll, we'll start out and we run two combines, we run three grain buggies, and typically one of these fields is a full circle is 120 acres. And we can usually cut one and a half to two full circles a day. Um, so one machine is capable of cutting Oh, probably around right around 1.5 to 2 million pounds a day per machine. So it takes quite a few buggies to pull that many pounds away. It takes a lot of trucks to get that to the elevator. And it takes an elevator that's capable of dumping that much volume. Most of this corn, when we harvest it, goes to the elevator. From the elevator, it goes to a feed yard. To the feed yard, it goes into a ration for cattle. This particular corn is white corn. And this is uh, food grade corn, and it, it's used. They grind it and make corn tortillas out of it. They make uh, chips, and this is probably really this food grade corn is the only corn that we used for human consumption straight from the field. One bushel of corn doesn't go a long way towards making a steak because that, that one calf eats a tremendous amount daily and has to be on feed for, you know, at, at least six weeks. One bushel of, of this white corn, well, you can imagine if 56 pounds is what one bushel of corn weighs, that's a lot of bags of, of fritos or, or tostitos or whatever your preference is. This corn crop will probably have about 22 inches of water pumped on it this year. And yeah, that is, uh, that's, that's quite a bit of water, but this land, this is our livelihood out here and, and our grandfathers and their grandfathers, we've all been farmers, and, and we just have to believe that we're being uh, the best stewards of the resources that we have available to us. 